And let us ask somebody who will be in a position to help get something done. Democratic Congressman from California, Rokana. Um, so, I mean, that says it. Americans, and for a long time this has been the case, want Congress to work together. They're tired of the yelling and the screaming and the posturing and the I'm a Democrat, I can't work with you, or I'm a Republican, I can't work with you. They just want legislation that will improve their lives. So as you look ahead to 2023, what can get, get, can get done? Well, Katie, I couldn't agree more. And Senator Rubio and I actually just this week came out with a bill to bring manufacturing back to the United States to create an economic development council that says, if you are creating critical industries, we will fund you and have manufacturing. And we're gonna do a joint op-ed. That's something that could pass. The CHIPS Act, which passed last time, totally bipartisan. So I think when it comes to reshoring, when it comes to investing in our country, that can be bipartisan and get done. I know it's not your party, but currently the Republicans in the House going into next year, having a bit of a spat over who's gonna be the speaker, that's putting it mildly. Uh, Kevin McCarthy might be in a position where he is gonna be beholden to the more extreme parts of his caucus because he might have to compromise in the motion to vacate, which we talked about at the top of the show, so we don't need to explain it again. But do you see, that situation as, as a problem for Democrats, even if they did want to work with Republicans? It's going to make it tough. I mean, I think Kevin McCarthy is going to realize what John Boehner realized, that Nancy Pelosi was pretty extraordinary in what she did. Uh, and he's going to have to come to Democrats on key votes, like keeping Ukraine funded, like making sure that we're not defaulting on the debt. Uh, but at the end of the day, I hope for the sake of the institution uh, that he doesn't give in to demands that totally weaken the, uh, the, the speakership where we're having a change every few weeks. How do you feel about the two-party system? I, look, I support actually third party candidates. I've always said that. I think it would be healthy uh, for our democracy. But the question is, what are you standing for as a third party? I'm a proud Democrat. I've uh, started interning for, you know, Jimmy Carter and worked uh, as a st when Barack Obama was running for the state senate. I understand, but the, the parties make it so that you can't find compromise. And, and we talked about Kirsten Sinema up top, top as well. She says she's moving to be an independent so that she can do, she can make deals with both sides, so that she's not beholden to one party. I mean, and we'll see what she ends up doing when she's uh, next year in her role as senator. But uh, do you see the two-party system as limiting to get things done? No, because the CHIPS Act, I worked with Senator Rob Portman. We just passed actually a quantum computing bill going to the president's desk, worked with Representative Nancy Mace. Ru Senator Rubio and I are doing this bill on manufacturing. Here's the thing with Senator Sinema, with due respect, it depends, what are you standing for as an independent? The problem many of us had is she is standing for tax cuts for hedge fund, you know, and that's something that actually populist Republicans and populist Democrats disagree with. So I think it's fine to be independent. The question is, what are you gonna be independent for? You talk about a new economic patriotism, um, and you clearly with the, the bills you've gotten behind, the compromises that you've sought, you, you're moving in that direction. Is there more room in doing things that, that create jobs? Is there more room in certain sectors to find compromise than others? Absolutely, and I think making America a manufacturing superpower is one of those areas. Look, we didn't make masks in this country. We didn't make enough Tylenol. We don't make antibiotics. People said, what happened? We don't make semiconductors. We offshored so many jobs, decimated factory towns. That's something Republicans and Democrats agree on. And there is an opportunity to do what Alexander Hamilton did, rebuild America to a manufacturing superpower. And there are a lot of good Republicans, actually, who disagree with me on a lot of things, but agree on that. When you spend some time um, in the middle of the country, places that maybe didn't expect to see you. What do you hear from people when you talk about these ideas, this new economic patriotism? What's the message that you want to send to other Democrats in your party leadership about how to message, how to bring back some of those voters that now see the Republicans as their future, not the Democrats? One is to listen and listen with respect. Two is to acknowledge people's anger and grievance. The working class and middle class was hollowed out in this country. They say their jobs were shipped offshore to China, to Mexico, and all we offered was an unemployment check or trade adjustment assistance. We didn't care. And so first is acknowledging the anger, and second then is having a vision that's gonna deliver, and it's not gonna be overnight. If we spend 30 years offshoring the jobs, we've gotta spend at least a decade delivering to earn back trust. It's gonna be a slow, painful process, but we can start now. Um, immigration is a big deal right now. They're seeing a surge of immigrants at the border in Texas, so much so that um, some of the border cities can't handle the overflow. Is there a bipartisan solution, a, a, a immigration compromise 
that can be had in 2023? There is. We've passed a bipartisan bill in the House, the Farm Modernization One Act. One that's passed and sent to the president's desk. The, the challenge is the Senate. Look, here's what the bill does. Increase border Well, the challenge security. is going to be the House next year, but, more so than the Senate. Fair enough. And the question is, can we come together on a basic principle, have increased border security, but have people come here uh, to be able to work and then have some path to being able to have permanent status as, as workers? That would make it far more orderly than having them cross the border at great risk to their lives and at great destruction to the property of people in America who are on the border. I think the ideas are there. The challenge is, look, candidly, it's very hard to do, take that position in a Republican primary today. When Marco Rubio tried doing that in 2016, he was attacked, and he, one of the reasons he didn't win. So I think that is honestly the challenge. Are you comfortable with Elon Musk right now? I mean, he's, <laughs> and I, I mean this seriously, there's the erratic behavior on Twitter. Are you comfortable with him having the government contract he does for SpaceX? Do you feel like he is somebody that can still lead on that, given what we're seeing with Twitter? Well, I have concerns, obviously, on Twitter, and I think we need to have an independent group that is making some of these decisions and not just concentrated power. But I don't think the two are separate. I mean, Ash Carter, the late Ash Carter, helped uh, establish SpaceX and the Air Force. That's an extraordinary partnership, and it's leading to extraordinary possibilities of exploring space. We should be for innovation. We were just talking at the break about fusion. That's the most consequential thing, actually, more than anything that happened this year. In Livermore Laboratories, they figured out how to have have more energy coming out than coming in when you collapse two hydrogen atoms and have helium. That would be the holy grail if they if they actually develop that. So you're not nervous about Elon Musk and SpaceX? I, I mean, not, not based on the facts so far. Not, not, I mean, if things come out that he's doing things uh, un incorrectly, absolutely. But uh, Twitter is a separate issue. I'm con I have concerns there. Okay.